and welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today's episode is a history episode and we're going to continue talking about World War I. So remember, last week we talked about World War I leaders. This week we're going to talk about World War I countries and kind of the course of the war and um, what happened to start it, what happened to end it, etc. So let's go ahead and start doodling. Remember from last week, we talked about the specific countries that were involved, and they were Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire on the Central Powers side, and Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, and the United States eventually on the Allied Powers side. And also remember last week, we talked about how World War I began after Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria was assassinated. He was heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire and was assassinated along with his wife Sophie by the Serbian nationalist Gavrilo Princip on June 28, 1914. Because mighty Russia supported Serbia, Austria-Hungary waited to declare war until its leaders received assurance from German leader Kaiser Wilhelm II that Germany would support their cause. Austro-Hungarian leaders feared that a Russian intervention would involve Russia's ally, France, and then possibly Great Britain as well. On July 5th, Kaiser Wilhelm pledged his support but did it in secret, giving Austria-Hungary a so-called blank check. This blank check was assurance of Germany's backing in the case of war. The monarchy of Austria-Hungary then sent an ultimatum to Serbia, but this ultimatum had such harsh terms, it made it almost impossible to accept. Within just a week, Russia, Belgium, France, Great Britain, and Serbia had lined up against Austria-Hungary and Germany, and World War I had begun. On the Western Front, German troops crossed the border into Belgium on August 4, 1914. In the first battle of World War I, the Germans assaulted the heavily fortified city of Liege using the most powerful weapons in their arsenal, enormous siege cannons, to capture the city by August 15th. The Germans left death and destruction in their wake as they advanced through Belgium toward France. On the Eastern Front of World War I, Russian forces invaded the German-held regions of East Prussia and Poland, but were stopped short by German and Austrian forces at the Battle of Tannenberg in late August 1914. From 1914 to 1916, Russia's army mounted several offenses on World War I's Eastern Front, but were ultimately unable to break through the German lines. Defeat on the battlefield combined with economic instability and the scarcity of food and other essentials led to mounting discontent among Russia's population, especially the part of Russia's population that were poor or peasants. This increased hostility was directed toward Tsar Nicholas II, who we talked about last week. Russia had now become unstable, and this exploded into the Russian Revolution of 1917, which was spearheaded by Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks. This ended the rule of Nicholas II and brought a stop to Russian participation in World War I. 
Now, let's look at the United States involvement in World War I. At the outbreak of fighting in 1914, the United States remained on the sidelines of the war. They preferred neutrality, which was also favored by President Woodrow Wilson, while continuing to engage in commerce and shipping with European countries on both sides of the conflict. This neutrality, however, was becoming increasingly difficult to maintain because of Germany's submarine aggression against neutral ships, including those carrying passengers. In 1915, Germany declared the waters surrounding the British Isles to be a war zone, and German U-boats sunk several commercial and passenger vessels, including even some U.S. ships. Widespread protest over the sinking of the British ocean liner Lusitania traveling from New York to Liverpool, with hundreds of American passengers on board in May 1915, helped turn the tide of American public opinion against Germany and away from neutrality. In February 1917, Congress then passed a $250 million arms appropriations bill, which was intended to make sure that the United States was ready for war. Germany then sunk four more U.S. merchant ships just the following month. And so then, on April 2nd, Woodrow Wilson appeared before Congress and called for a declaration of war against Germany. World War I was the first major conflict to harness the power of planes. Though back then, using planes was not as impactful as the British Royal Navy or Germany's U-boats even, but this use of planes in World War I set the stage for the use of planes in later military conflicts around the globe. By the fall of 1918, the Central Powers were unraveling on all fronts. Austria-Hungary, dissolving from within due to growing national movements among its diverse population, reached an armistice on November 4th. Now, an armistice is when two countries or two sides of a, a war come together and decide to stop fighting and settle on a truce. Facing dwindling resources at this point on the battlefield and discontent on the home front and the surrender of its allies, Germany was finally forced to also seek an armistice on November 11, 1918. This ended World War I. World War I has been referred to as the first modern war. Many of the technologies now associated with military conflict, like machine guns, tanks, aerial combat, which just means planes, and radio communications were introduced on a massive scale during World War I. But World War I took the lives of more than 9 million soldiers. 21 million more were wounded and civilian casualties numbered close to 10 million. The two nations most affected with these casu casualties were Germany and France, each of which sent some 80% of their male populations between the ages of 15 and 49 into battle. So overall, World War I impacted the world on many different fronts. And that is all for today. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new episodes from Doodling Through Education. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And on that note, be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.